Welcome to part 8 of the series on the M5 forecasting competition. In this video, we're going to transform the time series data in order to make each data point more informative. To be more precise, instead of having each level 12 series in one row, we're going to create a row for each day of each level 12 series and build features around that date. We're also going to build a local validation set into the pipeline so that we can get feedback using the leaderboard loss function, but without submitting. Having this local validation score is going to help us optimize the model with a proper objective. As always, the notebook used in this video will be down in the description below. If you find this useful, please drop a like and subscribe for more content on this channel. The motivation behind transforming this time series is elaborated in part 6 of the series, but as a recap, the data we're given is formatted like this. Each row describes historical sales performance of a product in one of the 10 stores. In the rows store sales information by having these D underscore columns, where each column denotes the sales amount of that day. With this sort of data format, we'll not be able to encode information describing the day when we're making forecasts. For example, when we ask the model to make a prediction, we might want to tell it what day of the week this is and whether or not there's a holiday on this date. The resolution to this problem is to reformat this data. So instead of having one row for all historical sales number for a level 12 series, we're going to make a row for each series in each day. And then we can make columns describing that day and other interesting features such as lags. We'll calculate the weight for each series just as before. So just thinking about the transformation, we know we're going to end up with a large data frame. And if you're using a Kaggle kernel with max 16 gigs of RAM, or anything with a memory limit. You'll likely need to reduce memory usage of this notebook as it runs. I found this function. I'll link the notebook where I found it in the descriptions. What it's going to do is basically take all the integers and float values, check if they actually need to be the object type they are. For example, all the sales columns are of type N64, which is unnecessary because the largest sales is 763 which we can store with just N16, a value type that takes less memory than N64. So this is a useful function to have in hand, and we'll use it later. Now onto the actual transformation. Before we pivot the table, we want to create columns from days 1914 to 1941 and fill those values with np.nan. This is because we want to create rows for these forecast days with the same features that will later add on to the training data. And if we add the days here, the melt function will take care of the rest, and we'll have rows for these days just like any other days, except the label column will be set to NAN. I'm also going to filter out all days before 1100. As we've seen in previous videos, recency matters, and days far back into history might not help us with our forecast. So simply dropping these days seems like a good idea to help both with performance and training time. And having less rows is going to allow us to make more features if you have memory limits. I'm creating a temporary variable here because I want to keep DF as is for local WRMSSE calculations later. Then I'll use the pandas data frame melt method with the id columns as id variables and the d underscore columns as value variables. Whatever we pass in as the id variables are going to be duplicated for each of the value columns. And the duplicated rows are going to each take one column name along with its value. In the var name field, we can specify the new column name that stores the original column names. So in this case, the original column names are the underscore followed by a day number. And in the value name field, we can specify the new column name that stores the original column values. So for example, the underscore 1100 had a value 1 for the first series. And in our melted version, we have a row with the series ID, the underscore 1100 as the day number, and 1 in the sales column reformat the day to the actual integers, and now we'll be able to merge the melted data frame with the calendar data frame to encode information describing the day. From the calendar data frame, we'll get four columns with information describing holidays, event name 1 and 2, and event type 1 and 2. These are either string values with the holiday name or holiday type or NAN, which means there isn't a holiday on this day. We'll typecast these columns to category, and use the pandas series method cat.codes.asttype int8, which basically assigns an integer to each unique value in the series, including the name values, which are assigned to be negative 1. We'll also make the id columns to categorical encodings, so we'll create a new column for each of them with column names appended by underscore encoding. 
drop the original ID columns as we don't need them anymore, and also drop the year column. I don't think this was useful, but you can definitely experiment with different feature sets. Then use the reduce memory function we saved earlier and move on to creating some lag features. These features are going to tell the model historical sales performance of the series. For example, for each row, lag 28 is going to be the sales value of the series 20 days ago with respect to the day number in that row. To create respective lag values, we'll use the pandas group by and then shift method to shift the sales with respective numbers of lag days. To see an example of this, if we group by ID and shift by 1, store this in a column called test, then the values in the column test for entries on day 1101 will match with the sales value for entries on day 1100. I'm also just filling the name values with negative 1 in order to typecast to column to n16. So I'm creating several lag values spaced out by 7 days just to make sure these lags are on the same weekday as the prediction day. Then once all the lag features are created, we want to drop all the rows where we wasn't able to get these features. So the days closer to 1100 will not be able to get information from say 77 days ago just because we didn't include those days when we melt the data frame. So we'll drop all rows with negative 1 in the lag 77 column. And this should be sufficient for all rows with negative 1 values in the lag features to be filtered out. Just as a sanity check, lag 28 actually stores the sales value 28 days ago. You can experiment with different number of lag days, but be careful if you're creating too many lags and if you also have memory limitations. So now we have a data frame with both day feature and lag features. We can also include the weekly price information as price point fluctuations might have an impact on the sales numbers. We know that the price data frame can be indexed by ID and a week ID. So we'll first want to fetch the week ID of each day from the calendar data frame by merging it with DF melted. Then just merge with price DF on ID and week ID. For the model, we're going to use LightGBM. This is a tree boosting algorithm that outperforms XGBoost by its training speed and power to handle large size data like this. As mentioned in the last video, I found this notebook that uses data in this format, and the authors use LightGBM. So these parameters I actually took from them with only slight modifications. I only have some experience with XGBoost, but this is the first time I'm using LightGBM. So you can definitely do more parameter tuning if you're more familiar with the library. Then we'll separate out our training, validation, and test set. For the training set, we're going to use everything before day 1886. The validation set is only going to be for our local WRMSSE calculations, and the test set is going to be in the actual forecast days. So we'll have Y train and Y val, but not Y test. Delete DF melted to save memory. And I'll also copy this block of code from the notebook. So basically, we'll need to create a dataset object in LightGBM for model training. The dataset object requires the data, which is our X train without the ID column. And our labels are white train. We also need to separate out some rows as a quote unquote fake validation set from the training set so that the model can give us real time feedback as we pass it in as the valid sets. The numpy.setdiff1d is basically going to get all indices in X train that's not randomly chosen as our fake validation set. At this point, we're ready to pass in the parameters, train data, and fake validation set to train the model. Notice that the feedback only gives RMSE score, which will not align with the leaderboard calculations. So in order to get an idea of how good this model actually is according to our leaderboard metrics, we'll need to make predictions on the validation set. Now this time, the actual validation set was separated out as XBAL. To get a daily forecast for each of the days between 1886 and 1913, we can predict for XBAL where day equals a certain day number, make sure the same features are used as in the training time, and then the order of these predictions will line up with the IDs and DF, just because of how the melt method works. After this, we'll just do the same mode aggregation for higher levels and calculate the WRMSSE. We can also plot the feature importance using the plot importance method from LightGBM to get an idea of what the model is mostly looking at when it makes these forecasts. The train is going to take some time, so I'll just show you a version that I have finished running before. As you see, the local validation score is very close to the leaderboard score. To make the submission file, 
or forecast the test dates using the same method as for the validation dates. So use the model.predict on x test, where the day equals to a certain forecast day. And since the IDs will line up, we can just set the forecast columns and the submission data frame to that prediction array. The rest will just be like any previous submissions. We'll make the dummy forecast for the evaluation dates, append that to submit DF, and save the data frame as submission.csv. Then commit and submit output once the kernel finishes running. With this data format, there's a lot more features you can experiment with. And also with the local WRMSC feedback score, you can do some model tuning to optimize for the actual leaderboard metric. So that'll be it for this video. As always, stay safe and happy. See you next time.